The Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, and Mercedes-Benz C-Class are arch rivals among compact luxury sedans. They are extremely competitive in the market and they're competitive in terms of features and things like that. But if you look at their spec sheets or window stickers like this, you'll see the same things across the board. Just because they're there though, doesn't mean they're all done well. So what we're going to do is run you through who does it best and who does it worst in a number of features and attributes. Right off the bat, here are a couple from the BMW 3 Series. Who did it worst? Door locks. Wait a minute, where are they? Oh, that's right. It's an older design. The only door lock button is one button way in the middle of the dashboard. It's time for them to catch up with the times. And then there's the spring back turn signal. Even BMW seems to have recognized that once you, uh, once you hit this thing, it's better if it stays down because then it's like a tactile message to you that it's still on and you don't drive with it on all the time. So who does turn signals best? Well, either of the BMW's competitors do it fine as it regards the turn signal lever, but we're going to say the Audi A4 does it best because it has that cool progressive taillight turn signal that moves off to the side. Next up, drivetrain mode selection buttons. Who did it worse? Well, unfortunately, it's the Audi A4. This is the drive select uh, feature, as they call it. The problem is the buttons are up here mixed in with other buttons. Uh, you can't really operate them by feel. And when you hit them, first it comes up on the display, and then you have to hit it again to make it work. So first they're not within reach, you can't tell by feeling them, and you have to hit them twice. So who did it best? The BMW 3 Series. The mode selection uh, is in the form of a rocker switch right here, easy to feel with your hands. You don't even have to look down. Uh, forward makes it progressively more sporty. Back makes it more comfortable and efficient. Next up is multimedia systems. All three of these cars use the approach with a separate controller system and a screen up high as opposed to a touch screen. And they're all pretty good. But if we have to pick a favorite, it is the BMW 3 Series iDrive system, which is amazing because when this system first came out, it was the first of its type and it was terrible and everyone hated it. Uh, they've worked on it, they've made it better. Now what you get is much simpler menus uh, with a really nice display of kind of a preview of what is underneath each selection there. They made it simple and usable and they kept it that way. Who did it worst? Well, in this case, it's the A4's multimedia interface or MMI. Now to be clear, it's still a good system, uh, but we actually used to like it better before. It's kind of the opposite of what happened with iDrive. iDrive was too complex and got better. Uh, MMI was really clear and usable and now it's gotten a little bit more complex. Now you got things on the left, you got things on the right, in addition to the uh, general rotating knob selections. Uh, no question, it's a beautiful interface, lots of good graphics, better than iDrive, but if we have to choose, this one did it worst. Next up, moonroofs. Who did it worst? Well, it's the Audi A4. Uh, perfectly respectable moonroof with a real uh, solid sliding uh, shade. Thing is, it's just not that big. In fairness, the BMW's moonroof is only a little bit bigger, but look at this. Who did it right? Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Look at the size of this thing. First of all, the front one goes way farther back than the other two, and a bonus second moonroof in the back. All of these cars have automatic transmissions, so which has the best gear selector? Trick question, they all suck. There are all these springy uh, electronic uh, controls as opposed to actual shifters, uh, but who did it best? Here's a shocker, the column shifter on the Mercedes. I know, it sounds crazy, but here's what we're thinking. If it's just going to be an electronic switch, uh, why not put it up here and out of the way? If it's going to be on the console, you want it to be uh, a real mechanical or at least mechanical feeling shifter with park, neutral, reverse, drive, etc. So who did it worse? The BMW 3 Series. Now honestly, we thought about it. Is there that much difference between the springy lever in the BMW 3 Series and the A4 from Audi? Uh, not too much, but for what it's worth, 
The first place we started seeing these little spring back deals instead of real shifters was in a BMW. So BMW, you're guilty and you did it work. A little redemption for BMW, however, is in the form of who did the best parking brake. And it is BMW, why? Because it's a hand lever. I know you think it's a small deal, but if you like performance driving, every now and then you wanna pull an e-brake turn and the other guys both have electronic parking brake switches. Last aspect, trunks. Who did it best? Well, they all do it quite well. They got good sized trunks and the hinges go you know, off to the side and don't encroach on the uh, trunk space, the cargo space. But here's the difference. Look at the pass-through. Even though they all have pass-throughs, this one is enormous. It is super wide and super tall. Uh, and that is actually pretty rare. So who did it worst? Well, it's the Mercedes. Now you can see uh, it's a little bit narrower uh, than the body itself and there's this uh, cross member up top that compromises some of the height. Bear in mind if you look at the entire class the Mercedes is still quite good. Clearly some of these differences aren't that great which really underscores how closely tied these competitors are uh, and some of these features might not seem that important but once you're an owner the bloom comes off the rose and little things like this start to annoy you. Check out our luxury sedan comparison for all of the driving results and more.